Holt in San Francisco. General Motors is now taking the wraps off of that project and giving some journalists, including myself, a chance to go for a ride in this self-driving vehicle. Why is this important? Because General Motors is involved in a race with Waymo, with other automakers, to take self-driving cars from the test phase to the deployment, where the public will actually be riding in these vehicles. And GM believes testing in San Francisco gives them a distinct advantage. What's well, so important because our, our vehicles see more and learn more in this kind of environment. So we have a test fleet here in San Francisco. We also have a test fleet that's operating in Scottsdale in Arizona. So we have a very good A-B comparison between those two locations. And as a simple rule of thumb, our cars here will see more in one minute in San Francisco than they will see in one hour of driving uh, in Scottsdale. So I think that gives you a sense for the, the, the exponentially greater level of complexity that we're taking on in this environment. There is a specific reason that Dan Ammon referenced testing self-driving vehicles in Arizona because that's where Waymo plans to launch its first self-driving ride-hailing service on a limited basis in the months to come. General Motors also probably will be launching its own ride-hailing service. As you take a look at shares of General Motors, keep in mind that tomorrow, Mary Barra, CEO for General Motors, will outline the company's autonomous drive strategy. Guys, it'll be interesting to see how quickly GM can get this up from the test phase to deployment. But we had a chance to go for the ride yesterday. It handled all of the trickiness that can come along with uh, a self-driving vehicle maneuvering through the streets of San Francisco. We'll have more on this over the next couple of days as well. Back to you. General Motors plans to take on ride sharing services with self-driving cars by 2019. General Motors is preparing to take on Uber, Lyft and other ride hailing companies with its own self-driving ride hailing service by 2019. As we first launched autonomous and ride sharing fleets, we believe the biggest opportunities are in the coastal areas. General Motors CEO Mary Barra told analysts as she and other GM executives updated investors on the company's strategy for autonomous drive vehicles. The automaker is already operating self-driving Chevy Bolts in San Francisco as part of a beta test run by the company's subsidiary, Cruise Automation. Dan Amman, the president of GM, says the automaker is rapidly making progress on its goal of safely operating self-driving cars in complex urban environments. We want to damage progress has been made to our overall mission, which is to deploy this technology at very large scale and the most complex environments with the right safety, Ammon told CNBC. In addition to ensuring that its self-driving cars can safely transport passengers to their destination, General Motors says the key will be bringing down the cost of these rides. GM expects the initial cost to passengers of early stage autonomous drive vehicles, ride share vehicles in San Francisco will be roughly $1.50 per mile, 40% below the cost of ride hailing services operated with a human driver. The automaker is developing its business plan, however, and is far from announcing the start of ride hailing service or how much rides cost in self-driving Chevy Bolts might cost. This technology will continually and rapidly improve once it's launched, Aman said. GM's announcement that it plans to start self-driving ride hailing services comes with less than a month after Waymo, formerly known as the Google Self-Driving Car Projects, said it will start ride hailing services in Phoenix using self-driving Chrysler minivans. Uh, there is a theory that because of automation self-driving cars that the automakers are going to lose money because they won't be able to sell as many cars individually as they used to. So what is that going to mean for the automakers? What is that going to mean for the future? Job cuts, job cuts, job cuts. The way the cities are actually built and, and uh, managed is going to change. Just like in Los Angeles, they're taking out car lanes because they're expecting smaller and less cars on the road than they had uh, in the past 40 to 50 years. So instead of traffic increasing, they're expecting it to decrease because I do believe that most people won't have cars because the reason that Los Angeles, as big as it is, can't expand, it's not because they don't have space. It's because 
they don't have enough roads for the for the vehicles that people need to get around. But if they can get past that, then they can actually probably double, maybe even triple the size of the city. So expect Los Angeles to go from a city of what, eight million, eight to 10 million to what, 25 within the next 30 years. But we'll see. We'll see. The driverless revolution may exact a political price. Washington, in its race to embrace driverless vehicles, Washington has cleared away regulatory hurdles for auto companies and brushed aside consumer warnings about the risk of crashes and hacking. But at a recent hearing, lawmakers absorbed an economic argument that illustrated how the driverless revolution they are encouraging could backfire politically, particularly in Trump country. It was the tale of a successful long distance beer run. A robotic truck coasted driverless 120 miles down Interstate 25 in Colorado on its way to deliver 51,744 cans of Budweiser. Not everyone at that hearing was impressed by the milestone, particularly the secretary treasurer of the Teamsters, whose nearly 600,000 unionized drivers played no small role in President Trump's victory last year. Driverless vehicles threatened to dramatically reduce America's 1.7 million trucking jobs. It is the front end of a wave of automation that technologists and economists have been warning for years to come. Years will come crashing down on America's political order. Some predict it could rival the impact of the economic globalization and the resulting offshoring of jobs that propelled Trump's victory in the presidential election. This is one of the biggest policy changes of our generation, said Sam Loesch, head of the government affairs for the Teamsters. This is not just about looking after the health and welfare of American workers, but also their livelihoods. Washington isn't ready for it. The Trump White House already has indicated it sees, sees it as some future administration's problem. Silicon Valley remains in shock over Treasury Secretary Stephen T. Mnuchin's remark in the spring that economic fallout from this type of automation is 50 to 100 years off and not even on my radar screen. Wow. I don't think anybody there is thinking about this seriously, said Martin Ford, author of Rise of the Robots, Technology and the Threat of the a Jobless Future. They're still looking at this as futuristic and not having an impact and not politically toxic. Once people start seeing the vehicles on the roads and jobs disappearing because of them, things will quickly become very different. The arrival of that reckoning is getting accelerated by Washington's bipartisan excitement for self-driving technology. One of the few policy issues advancing. New Trump administration regulations don't require industry to submit certain safety requirements, leaving it voluntary. In legislation already approved in the House and expected to pass in the Senate, strips authority from states to set many of their own guidelines. Objections raised by the National Governors Association and National Council of State Legislatures don't seem to be slowing things down. Consumer groups are dismayed. We understand how beneficial this technology can be, but we also understand that if we screw this up, human lives will be lost, said Jack Gillian, a head of advocates for highway and auto safety. We are at a time when there are already record recalls of vehicles because of safety defects. Why are we trusting these companies to do the right thing? Lobbying from the Teamsters succeeded in stripping commercial vehicles from the rapidly advancing congressional action. Automated commercial trucks would not get the exemptions to state and many federal rules as robot cars would in the legislation. Concession, heralded as a big victory by the Teamsters, was met with a shrug by the automation world. They don't expect it to slow down the arrival of fleets of self-driving trucks on the road. Momentum is already there, they say and agency regulators are working with the companies to get their prototypes highway ready. It was a political sign that there is fear about the impact of trucks, said Brian Walker Smith, a law professor at the University of South Carolina who researches vehicle automation. 
but it is not in the long term going to hamper their deployment. How soon the potential for economic disruption spills over into politics is a matter of debate among technologists and futurists, but they agree it will be much sooner than Nuchin predicts, possibly as soon as 2020. Get that, folks. Get that. 2020, when Trump would be up for re-election. Trump claimed a bigger share of the labor vote than any Republican since Ronald Reagan, winning 43% of it nationwide. Exit polls show. In Ohio, he beat Hillary Clinton commandingly in union households. Hanging on to those votes is not as simple as tapping the brakes on driverless technology. Such a move would have its own economic fallout, as companies developing the vehicles could merely move abroad. But if the White House and Congress don't start addressing the disruption that self-driving vehicles and related automation will cause, economists and political scientists warn Washington may one day face the kind of voter backlash seen in 2016 election. So far, the government is showing itself just as disconnected as it was to the troubles created for the same voters by globalization. Regardless of whether this creates a world where everyone has jobs or few people do, those jobs will be different, Smith said. Congress is not effectively discussing this. We don't sufficiently understand this disruption. At a California startup called Embark, they already are indications of how trucking jobs are about to change. The company has, in recent weeks, started test runs in which it is using self-driving trucks to ship smart refrigerators from a warehouse in Texas to a distribution center in Palm Springs. There is a driver in the cab, but for the bulk of the ride, when the truck is on the 10 freeway, that person is not doing the driving. Eventually, there could be nobody in the cab for legs of the trip. Embark's head of public policy, Johnny Morris, joins the trucking joins the American Trucking Association in offering an optimistic view, one in which truck drivers will still have jobs and their quality of life would be much improved. Instead of making long hauls thousands of miles, Morris said they could stay in their communities and handle the more complicated short hops at the beginning and at the end of trips, along with the loading and unloading. We believe automation can help improve the number and quality of jobs, he said. Now, Teamsters executives are skeptical, particularly as many pilot programs exhibit a diminished role for blue collar workers. Volvo, for example, boasts how the autonomous garbage truck it developed doesn't need a driver in the cab to navigate the route, freeing up that person to load the trash bins. Two jobs appear to become one. Many of the new positions created by such technology look nothing like the stable trucking jobs that are a staple of blue collar America. They involve coding, data analysis, and operation of complicated computer systems. The training is sophisticated and costly. A college degree could become a prerequisite. Ford says the White House and Congress better start paying closer attention to what self-driving technology means for truckers and others displaced by the new industry. If we don't figure out a way to solve this, he said, there's going to be a backlash. And that is from the L.A. Times. I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you, people are your politicians are telling you this is hundreds of years away or 50 years away. And they're lying. They're lying. Nuchin is lying. These things are already on the road. Uber and Lyft's uh, model, driverless model, I mean driver model, is built for driverless cars, autonomous vehicles. Human beings are expensive. The bulk of, of a ride, as it stands, is because of human intervention, human drivers. GM, like I said in the last article, GM said, they could immediately reduce the price of a ride per mile by 40%. You hear that? 40%. And that's just at the outset. It'll probably be lower than that. And I've heard some rides, uh, if you get a, not a caravan, but if you get a multi-passenger passenger vehicle, like a, a ride sharing, the price of the ride could be 
driven down by as much as 80 percent. When you talk about that kind of a uh, profit, you know, there's a big incentive for people to actually do this kind of stuff. And Congress, will, you know, money moves politics. Congress will bend. They've already bent. Uh, competition around the world for autonomous vehicles are going to drive this. It's going to happen. It's going to happen very rapidly. You know, they're talking about as soon as 2020. We're talking about two years. The legislation has already uh, been passed. It's just ironing out the details. It's going to go through. They're already changing the roads for this kind of stuff. It's already going to happen. It's just a matter about how fast. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I said years ago about China and automation, this kind of this kind of stuff. It's not a matter of 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 if it's a matter of when the target date seems to be 2025. For whatever reason, everybody seems to be focusing on 2025. So there's going to be a massive push for this kind of automation. And this is just these are this is just in transportation. This is just in transportation. What's going to happen when the AIs and other things actually come in? You, we people, we have to get ready for this. You got to not sleep on this kind of stuff. You're going to have to look at the landscape. You're going to have to see where it's going. And you're going to have to get ahead of this curve. Especially young folks. But anyway, it's enough of this. Uh, I'm going to cut out of here. Uh, this is BGS out. I'll see you guys on the next one.